Something's going to happen. Something wonderful. G'day fans and welcome back. We're here again already only after a handful of days from Saturday. Now, I don't know if you guys have picked up on this, but it's raining outside. What is it with our show and it's always raining on a Wednesday night? Why do you go outside? Why would you go outside when you could stay here with us, get some nerdy action happening? We've got seven people with us already. Look at the rolling. We've got William, we've got Ange, Claire's joining, Greg. Good old Tomo is back after his technical problems last week. All very good. Even uh, Spankin has joined us. So there you go. He needs a bit of a, um, uh, what do you call it? A bit of a spelling test, though. Nerd with a with a U just doesn't sound right, does it? Even Aaron's joined us. Oh, mate, they're rolling in like oranges. Lads, how are we tonight, MPS and Jeffro? Oh, very good. Very good. I was putting me ACDC on just before, just to get me pumped up. <laughs> I, was, I was just putting the AC on. Oh, no, yeah, not the air conditioning. The, oh, the, new, yeah, the, right new the new single oh, from golly. the boys. Oh, golly. So for those joining us for the first time, yes, the humour doesn't get any better than that. Very good stuff. Yeah, this is something that impacts a lot of people, not in a bad way, but in a positive way. So uh, we thought this would be something worth bringing up. And uh, so MPS has got the task of talking about tattoos. So uh, over to you, <clears> sir. Start tatting up. And no, I'm not talking about the little man from Fantasy Island, you know, fast the plane, the plane, you know, because his oh, name yeah, was Tattoo. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very good. Um, I just got that. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So, look, tattoos are a pretty big thing for a lot of people nowadays, and it's far more popular than it's ever been. Uh, for me, it started um, seeing that Bon Jovi was what was a regular dude because when I grew up, it was only the tough people that had tattoos, you know, the bouncers and the, the guys who were in the military and the Navy and all that sort of stuff. And you you heard stories, and I knew people with tattoos. We had family friends and all that sort of stuff, um, mostly men. There were a few women who had them and all that sort of stuff. And Popeye. they were... Hey? Popeye was a major one. He had the boat anchor, if I recall. Yeah, you? So, yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of uh, naval officers. I was going to say something else, but that was just going to drag the show to a whole different place. Uh, a lot of naval... Um, officers have them as well for that sort of thing. But a lot of people do have them for whatever reason, and it's not here for why they have them. We're talking about the art of the tattoo, which is quite um, interesting because I find it these people get one shot at doing a piece of art, um, and that's it, one shot, and you can muck it up or you can make it spectacular or there's that middle sort of ground where um, people go, well, it's okay, and I can sort of see what you're doing with it. Hang on, I'm going to uh, stop you there for a sec. Uh, Michelle's sister has apparently joined us, who's not a nerd. So, Michelle, uh, if you're talking about how to get therapy for your sister after she's watched us gurgle on for a while, because you probably will need it, uh, we kind of can't help you there. But uh, you do get to at least get to show her this once we've got <laughs> so how good is that? <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, move on. I found it interesting that Bon Jovi had one because he didn't seem like that sort of tough guy in, in that sort of sense. He was a, a rocker and it wasn't anything interesting, but it was a Superman tattoo. And that's the best picture I could get. So sorry if it's a bit fuzzy. And I thought about this. This was the uh, late 80s, early 90s when he got this on. And I always thought about it at the time for, well, do I, don't I? And, and uh, for those of you who know me, I don't have any. And we'll get to theories about that later on. Um, but, yeah, these are, are becoming pretty popular around the place. So, dude, have you seen this one? I didn't know you could get tattoos done in UV ink, so you can only see it natural. It shows yeah. up in black light. It's almost like, well, what's the point? I mean, how often are you going to be walking around with an ultraviolet light going, look, there it is, check it out. So, it yeah, will, right it's, it's For people who are – it's for the younger generation who go to all the nightclubs still that have the, the oh, strobe yeah. lights and all that sort of stuff. Now, what I'm going to do is explain a few types of tattoos and show you bits and pieces and all that sort of stuff. I'm not going to go into the too much of the history but it's been around for quite some time uh and we shall continue it also also occurred on the x-files so if you remember there was a, a really strange uh episode where there was a like a circus type act now you can see in the corner is a guy that looks like he's got jigsaw pieces all over him and yes he does he's called the enigma uh and he's part of a, a troop that go around that are um i don't know what you call with the the 
the, the stiff people in the world would call them uh, freaks of nature. But these guys are entertainers and all that sort of stuff. And he's now recognized uh, by the Guinness Book of World Records in uh, 2011 for his full body jigsaw uh, puzzle tattoo that includes 2,123 pieces. Okay. So he, he was going for a complete uh, body tattoo. Um, of a jigsaw puzzle and it's all over him and it's in blue and it is kind of cool not something i would do because i really hate jigsaw puzzles no. but you want to rip a piece of him off and then say hey go find that later on um <laughs> no, what he could do is say hey you want a piece of me yeah <laughs> now the interesting thing is um if you tattoo yourself it's different to if you put full body paint on top of yourself because full body paint will actually clog the, the pores of the skin and, and make you suffocate whereas this won't for some reason however uh, one of the reasons I don't have tattoos is because I get MRIs done on my knees and they say on the form, do you have tattoos? Now, back in the earlier days until probably, I think it's five or 10 years ago, there was lead based pigments. And so that would affect the fact that an MRI is just a big magnet just spinning around and may affect you. So that's another reason. Uh, now, I also watch Ink Master, and I love the show for the fact of the the flash challenges they do because they're all different, and the fact that these guys get one shot at doing a piece of art, and sometimes it goes right and sometimes it goes horribly wrong. But these guys are pretty cool, and it's not your usual sort of... Um, uh, what's the what's the word I'm looking for? It's not your usual sort of... It's not like The Bachelor or, or Big Brother or any of that sort of stuff. It is a reality TV but it's more for me about the art. I don't care about the whinging and bitching that they do behind the scenes. Um, yeah. About the uh, about the guy from the X-Files, right? Uh, here's a good question from Aaron. Where do they tattoo the corner pieces? Because <laughs> they're the first bit you usually put together and the edges yeah. to actually make that for the yeah. picture. So, you know. uh, Don't ask Aaron and we won't tell you. Um, <laughs> so the three, the three current, well, two current hosts, because Oliver Peck has now had to leave the show because of uh, certain reasons. Dave Navarro, who's one of the lead, uh, uh, one of the founding members of Jane's Addiction, the band. Uh, Chris Nunes, who has handcrafted tattoo, and uh, Oliver Peck, who does, who owns Elm Street tattoos. These are the three judges. Dave doesn't tattoo, but he's got a lot, a lot of them, so he understands what it's like to be the client. Now the show is essentially, uh, you come in, ask ask or get what you want and you walk away supposedly happy and sometimes they don't. Now there are a couple of spin-off shows from here but that's not for today's discussion. Um, and as I said before only tough guys where, where ink tattoos have been practiced across the globe since the, at least the Neolithic times as evidenced by mummified preserved skin and ancient art and archaeological records. The oldest discovery of tattooed human skin on, to date is found on the body of oh my god these, these names I think it's Otzi the Iceman dating between 3,370 uh, and 3,100 BC. So they've been around for a while and in different forms, but we're not going to discuss all of those just yet. Um, now, here are some of the styles that you'll see tonight. Uh, traditional tattooing style, realism or realistic style, tattoo, watercolour, tribal, new school, neo-traditional and Japanese. Now, there are a stack more of those and I could do a presentation on each of these alone, but I will not do that tonight. And I think we are ready to go. Now we've got some friendly ink here. These are people that we know, and I know there are a lot of people who have ink on them. Um, one of them is uh, Mel, friend of the show. She has the the Enterprise on her in a watercolor, and it is pretty nice. Uh, a lot of people do like that piece. Uh, on the other side, the Spider Man is a friend of ours, Robbie, and it looks like it's coming out of his vein. Um, and I think that's very very cool. Now I know Spankin's got a, a Mandalorian logo. Um, I know someone who's got a uh, Klingon logo, uh, and there's a lady I know who's in South Australia who has all of the um, all of the cast from Next Gen tattooed on, <laughs> uh, and uh, she goes to all the sci-fi and stuff, uh, Star Trek conventions. Um, now, yeah, yeah. I was just going to jump in there. So Dave has just put this thing, and he's just going to hang a bit of crap on Daniel, right? But I'm going to just hang a bit of crap crap on Dave. So as you said. Uh, Spankin has a Mandalorian uh, logo on his on his arm, right? It was the first tattoo he was ever going to get. He goes to the tattoo place, uh, and he's with a couple of mates and all this sort of stuff. And, of course, he doesn't want to see the whole... Bzzz, so he turns away. So he's looking this way. Well, the artist draws the thing on the logo, right? And and when it's done, Spankin, get, Spankin says, oh, that didn't hurt at all. And that's when the tattoo artist says, I've only just done it in pen. I haven't actually done it yet. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there you go. 
Um, and yeah, and you mentioned about someone you knew in Adelaide who had a uh, the Star Trek thing. Um, some of the people who used to hang around the Armageddon Expos and the Supernovas and whatever, there's a lady running around there with a Stargate cast, all of all their faces tattooed on her back and her arms and all the rest of it. So I think it was Amanda Tapping said it was kind of weird once sort of seeing her own face tattooed on somebody else. Somebody out there will know who I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, yeah, I thought that's devotion to a show that uh, most people have probably forgotten now. So there you go. Yeah. Um, and we shall move on. Here are some, the rest of the presentation is people I found on the internet, which I thought these are, some of these are very, very cool. Um, comic book covers uh, and the logo for how much they were comic book. Cover. Now that's a rather large logo. That's a, that's almost a, a full sort of um, uh, bicep sort of there. Uh, scenes from films, you know, two jokers on the, on the left and uh, Deadpool uh well almost mermaid deadpool on the right and these are all pop cultural or uh fan based or nerd based or whatever the the case is and these are all different and that's the surprising thing they're all different because each person who does one um the artists they're all different as well so you can you get your good artists and you and you're not so good artists and certain people are known for doing some of these in the industry I'm um, just going to jump in. So Claire has acknowledged that, yep, she's the one with the Klingon logo, which is very cool. And Michelle, we're probably talking about the same person. There was a lady who used to hang out at the Pop Culture Expos. I can't imagine too many people would have the entire cast of SG-1. Uh, and when I said Stargate, that's what I think of SG-1. So that's probably why there was a bit of confusion there. So, uh, yeah, you'd be the same person. Yep. <clears throat> um, then they get cartoony. So obviously the comic book version of Joker and Harley and the other side of Harley as well uh wolverine because i'm not being favoritism to either one marvel or dc and these are all very cute in their cartoon form and sometimes you sort of think to yourself well look if they're doing it on skin why aren't they doing actual comic books or cartoons this is just another form of art that's all it is and usually these are one-off pieces uh, as opposed to a printed comic book which gets done you know thousands of, of, of titles and thousands of runs now, the process of getting a tattoo, first of all, someone comes up with an idea of what they want. And on the left-hand side, you get a picture of it, uh, like the Enterprise. Then someone makes a stencil and then places it on your body and make sure it's in the right position and the right placement and that you're happy with it. Then they start applying the line. Uh, and you can see from the picture with uh, with uh, Leo and the Ninja Turtles, they use reference materials. It's not like they're doing it off the top of their head because most of the time they see something and it's the first time they'll see an image. Uh, a lot of time on Ink Master they say, holy cow, how am I going to do this? Uh, and look, seriously, the most common people, the most common tattoos people ask for are snakes, daggers, roses, eagles. When you come up against a, a pop culture one, they actually freak out a little bit, which is kind of funny to watch. Uh, then you get an outline and you can either leave it as an outline or you can have them color it in. So on the left hand side, you've got a piece that's been worked on where only one turtle is green. Uh, and on the other side, a virtually full color um, finished piece. Uh, now, look, some of these uh, are interesting because this is the scene on the right hand side from. Um, oh, I've just gone blank on the film. It's from a record, actually, not a film. Ah, oh, well, it's inspired by the record, the Beatles record. Okay, well, it's Ed Norton, and and it was, uh, oh, what's his name? He was married to Angelina Jolie. Oh, crap, can't think of the top. It's Fight Club. It's Fight Club. Sorry, there you go. Um, yeah, well, so that's, that's the a... idea from the Beatles record. So, what was the Beatles record called, Jeffro? That was called Abbey Road. Thank you. On the right hand, on the left hand side. No, the right-hand side, when they're walking across yeah, the... Simpsons. I'm not talking about the Simpsons yet. I'm talking about the one on the left-hand side. So the piece, right. that's from Fight Club. The right-hand side, yes, is the Abbey Road Simpsons um, mesh. Now, we had our horror theme show the other night, and guess what? I found these, and it's pretty cool. Now, this is a chest piece. It runs right across the chest. And, look, I'm going to say for you ladies out there, there's going to be a lot of male flesh for you to have a look at tonight. There's not a lot for the guys, but there you go. Um, yeah, and... Sadly, nipples included, like the bat suit. Hey, hey, I like this one from Aaron. It's like, yeah, get the outline done and colour it in yourself. How hard could it be? I like that one, Aaron. Yeah, exactly. Especially if it's on your back and you've got to sit there with a, like a mirror and all the rest of it. And, 
Yeah. Well, look, you could get an outline, and if you've got small kids, just give them Texas, and when they get bored, they can just paint it different colours each time, and you know, plenty of fun for all the family. Um, yep, exactly. Some more uh, fan-inspired uh, monsters. So that's Herman Munster on the left-hand side, and the creature from the Black Lagoon on the le on the right. And that's in black and white style, which we'll get to shortly. Uh, some more horror. We've got a bit of a mesh there on the left with um, the Scream character and Freddy's glove. And then on the right, a very photorealistic Freddy Krueger looking pretty fine there. Um, I have forgotten her name. Melissa. 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 Yeah. yeah, that. I can never pronounce it. Um, now, different styles for different sort of pictures. So on the left, you've got a goofy sort of cartoon form. And on the right, you've got a photorealistic version of something very similar. And both are equally good in both universes. Um, one is far more detailed than the other. Uh, and that all depends on the taste of whoever wants what it is they want. Some different R2s. Now, you've got a nice full-framed R2 on the left-hand side. Um, and you've got two different watercolor styles on in the middle and on the right. Uh, now the water in the middle looks like it's a melted one and that's very cool. On the um, full right, it's actually full watercolor with what looks like happy little explosions and fireworks on the side. And again, it's all R2, but it's all different interpretations of the character and they all look very cool in different ways. It looks like he's doing acupuncture. <laughs> Mm. It does. Actually, the middle one looks like he's melting. It, like it's been a plastic yeah. one put in the microwave, and it just <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very very cool. Um, now, because I'm a fan of Alex Ross, uh, someone has done a the dual book covers that uh, he did a, a little while back of Superman and Batman, both photorealistic and right around the leg. So it's a full 360 piece. And to say that. Um, that is not outstanding artwork is is unbelievable it's almost identical to the book cover it's almost like alex ross put the book cover on the guy's leg it just it's <clears throat> awful and then you realize he's just wearing like tights you know that have got the print on the tights so yeah uh, that's all it is uh and again three different style of batman you know you got your christian bale you got your michael keaton and you got your adam west and all very different styles and on very different parts of the body too uh, the middle one is a arm. I think the two on the sides are both legs. Um, but yeah, very different styles. And you can see how detailed the artists get because if you look at the the reflection off the cows, you know that's something a really good artist will get to. You know, an average artist might not see that, but a really good artist will see that, including the line work around the mouths and all that sort of stuff. So very impressive stuff. And the fact that. You know, you look at the Adam West one and it looks like it's he's wearing the silk cape and the silk gloves. You know, you just got to be impressed with the artwork. So now these are skin rips and what they are basically is it makes it look like your skin's been ripped open. Uh, and there's some very cool ones and some we'll get to some chunky ones later. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is very cool. The the first Spider-Man outfit, the Tobey Maguire costume underneath the skin, which should be the other way around, but still looks very cool. Uh, the Thundercats logo, I think that's an arm piece for memory, and the ship from Futurama, which I don't know the name of that because I don't watch Futurama, but it's crashing into the body. So, yeah, you, it, it's still kind of cool how it's, you know, going into the body. Uh, the Flash logo on the left-hand side, and something a little bit different, the actual muscles and tendons in the arm on the right-hand side. So... Really, all you have to do is peel your skin off and you'd see that, but someone's decided that they want to see it in tattoo form for whatever reason. Maybe they're a, um, a medical student. <laughs> they might have been a fan of V, you know, ripping off the flesh. Maybe. Uh, another Spider-Man one. Um, the comic version of the costume, because you can tell by the blue, that's just underneath the, the pectoral muscle. Now, the Klingon... Um, knife on the left is interesting because it's a little bit different as a skin rip because it's actually going through the skin and, and staying there. Uh, so I don't think it's classed really as a traditional skin rip, but it's still classed as a skin rip. And on the right-hand side, the um, next-gen uniform coming out from underneath, um, which actually just looks painful regardless of how, how new or old it is. It just looks painful. 
Uh, the Superman logo from Superman Returns. Again, skin rip. Uh, and these are back pieces. Now, these are massively done pieces that take... Uh, on Ink Master, they do them over 35 hours, but they, they're they usually done over more than that. So, And they're all different variations and versions of this sort of thing. So on the left-hand side, you've got the cartoon Marvel Universe. And on the right-hand side, you've got almost like a comic book sort of um, page look to it. And... I think the one on the right hand side is far more superior than the one on the left um, in terms of the artwork. Uh, a Justice League piece of artwork, which is certainly got uh, nothing on the last one. This is not as good, I don't think, but it's still a full back piece. So again, it depends on the artists and how good they are and, and all that sort of thing. So um, yeah, I certainly wouldn't want that one on my back. Uh, there's a question for you from Michelle. Yeah. You got anything to do with scars? So, uh, no, I don't. Um, in Ink Master, what they do is occasionally they'll do a show where they'll bring someone in who's got a scar for whatever reason. Um, usually it's mastectomy type scars as well, and they'll cover over them, and you just see the pain that they're in for, for the needle hitting on the scar tissue. Uh, but no, I didn't find any of those uh, while I was doing this research. Um, Scooby Doo tattoo, and yeah, just a different piece. Uh, a little bit more colourful than probably the last one, but certainly a big back piece as it is. Uh, this one was a Alex Ross piece, if I recall correctly, when he wrote the title for Marvel and added the ca the characters in through there, and it's actually quite interesting um, to just have the word Marvel across your back and those those characters. Now, this is a bit of an obscure sort of, almost a watercolour sort of crayon type of, of image, but you can see that the artist actually looks like they know what they're doing, uh, as opposed to thinking, oh, this is just some sort of, you know, six-year-old has drawn this on someone's back sort of thing. It's quite impressive. It's got most of the current uh, Avengers from the series of films that have just been out in the last, I don't know, 10 years or whatever it is, 12 years. <clears throat> Now, here's a back piece for you Trekkie fans out there. This is a big one. Uh, it's actually only got three Star Trek references in it. It's got a Spock face, a logo, and an Enterprise, and the rest of it's all flowers. Um, I might suggest that this might be a cover-up, and I'll go into cover-ups shortly, but it's certainly a very big back piece. A little different to normal because it actually runs down towards the, the bottom um, and not so much at the top where that um, green uh, image is there. Now, when you talk about interesting back pieces or interesting pieces at all, you sort of got to wonder sometimes, why would you do it, you know? Now, we know some people that are, well, especially one who's a big Jar Jar Binks fan, and I don't think he's that big a Jar Jar Binks fan to go and want to get this piece done. But it's certainly, well, if you've got kids, you can go, Miss always watching you, sirs. <laughs> Oh, now we come up to sleeves as what well. I think it was Tom that mentioned it before. Now these are only half sleeves. They start from the shoulder and they work down to the elbow. Uh, so you've got a very nice Futurama piece with what looks like an awesome sort of planetary um, figure on top of that. You, the Star Wars piece that we saw before. And then on the right hand side, a bunch of superhero logos. All DC, uh, I think. Think. Yeah, I think they're all DC, but that's still very cool. Just it's almost like someone's got a bunch of badges and just chucked them on the, on the um, on their arm. Full sleeves. This means going from shoulder to wrist, and some of these are quite impressive. The turtles one on the right, on the left hand side, is uh, more the cartoon sort of turtle look, uh, comic book turtle and comic book and cartoon turtle. And on the right is the nineteen, uh, what was it, two thousand and two. Yep. 2002, Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire, and Kirsten Dunst. Um, and that's very, very impressive because that's gone right around the arm. Um, and the artist for that is phenomenal. And look, obviously, if someone's wearing a mask like Spider-Man, it's a lot easier to get through. Kirsten Dunst doesn't quite look the same. I actually think the picture looks a little bit better than the actual poster version of that same picture. You could argue it's meant to be somebody else, just somebody he saved. So that's how you get around yeah. that problem. Or it could be the guy's girlfriend. You know, whatever the case is. So, yeah, um, it's still very impressive. Uh, a little bit different, mech. 
So for the mechanicalized <clears throat> look, uh, the one on the right I'll go to first, which is a bit of an engine uh, or piston sort of system, um, which is very cool. It's got the chain running around both the cogs in there. The one on the left is damn impressive. And, you know, kudos to the guy for getting this done. This also runs up his neck and underneath, and it's all mech and to look like it's actually what the arm would do in terms of its function and i would love to see this guy actually move his arm and just see if the the parts sort of look like they could work in that uh some more sleeves a couple of uh dc ones so joker on the raw on the left hand side with what looks like all the villains and batman down the bottom and on the left hand side um is sorry on the right hand side is what looks like someone's got some material and just printed on it it's that impressive so again different artists have different versions of how they do things and that, especially with the, what the client wants as well but that's actually quite impressive i like that one now when it comes to having a piece of art that you want to cover up this is how it would do so for instance you have a uh, picture on the left of a woman sticking her tongue out um, and you don't want that anymore because that might have been an X and you made a mistake in getting that done uh, or for whatever reason you don't like the picture. So what you do is you go to a very good person uh, and these are exceptional artists, these ones who do cover-ups and you ask for something different. Um, and usually it's going to be a black piece for the most part because black will cover over most of the other colours within, within the art. So as you can see on the left-hand side, that's the picture of the girl with the tongue and the and the, the pigtails. Uh, then you can see the stencil gets put on to make sure it's all properly figured out. Uh, then they start the picture, which is the fourth, third one across, which is the beginnings of Vader. And then when you finish, you've got Vader. And 90% of the time with a good artist, you won't see the other image underneath. It will just disappear into the new picture like this one does. Something a little bit smaller. So has someone got a simple? I was going to say, you'd be a bit stiff if you go back and you go, in the end, I don't want the Darth Vader one anymore, trying to cover up the Darth Vader one there. That'd be a bit of a tall order, wouldn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, you would You would literally have no hope um, mm. because you'd have to go something darker or black or just make your whole arm black. And I've seen people who have done that, and it looks weird. So you said the girl was maybe an ex, so you end up, you're broken up with her, you put Darth Vader on, and then you go back to the girl again and you become a, an item, Like, and it's like, ah, uh, yeah, I need a face back, guys. <laughs> 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 That's when they go, well, you've got three other limbs, go for it. Mm -hmm. um, now this one's a little bit more simplified in the fact that it's just a set of lines, but very thick, dark, and starting to fade. And I've known people who have gone back with faded tattoos after 30 years and had them redone um, just to match up because like anything else, things fade. I've um, got a question that's come through from Stacey about how much tattoos cost. I guess it depends on the artist and their history and the detail and all the rest of it. So there's and probably... what you want and yeah there's a whole lot of factors so yeah um now the the after photo is a vader now you guys probably can't see this but because i've watched enough ink master i can actually see where that that old tattoo is shining through and i gotta say it doesn't look that good um and the fact that they've used a, a american tradition version um <clears throat> yeah it i can see where that whole old tattoo is so sometimes they're good sometimes they're not so good in terms of cover-ups i'm just wondering what's is, going on with the flower bracelet you know that where's well, that yeah, from? yeah i i don't know but again that's part of the american american traditional in terms of its style um so yeah it's it's really it's like saying to someone i commission you to do a piece of artwork for me but i want it to look like this and that and that and the artist is going what are you on man because you know that's all it is the difference is if you don't like it, you can sell it on. Here, well, you get one chance at covering up. I, I don't know how you cover up that Vader. Like I said before, it's all black, and I don't know how you would actually fix it uh, or change it. Um, and apparently the process of removing them nowadays, which is far simpler than it used to be, um, is many, many more times expensive and more painful than actually getting the ink in the first place. So um, I also understand there are some colours they can't get rid of. I think green is a colour they can't remove uh, in terms of the removal process currently. So, so yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's some of those, um, but it again, if you get yeah. the right cover up and the right artist and they do it the right way, you won't even know it's there. But I mean, the I funny can... thing about this, sorry, just quickly, is you got the person who said that like he got the B four, 
and they go to the after and they say, oh, yeah, we can tattoo a Darth Vader helmet on there and, uh, and you know, it'll cover it up. It'll be awesome. And the person says, yeah, but I'm a Star Trek fan. <laughs> 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 Give me a Spock instead. And this one's a pretty simple tribal tattoo on the left-hand side. Um, and they've covered up with a nice Vader and Empire picture down the bottom. Um, the cover-up is quite good. I can't really see where it's, it's sort of starts and finish but uh for me the vader picture has an issue with it and that's the fact that the cape doesn't look right but that's just me now we talk about all sorts of different things we've gone from superheroes and sci-fi to other pop culture icons like daffy duck uh donald duck sorry wrong wrong color duck um wrong so the one too. Hey? <laughs> yeah, it's the wrong studio yeah. <laughs> as well um, so Donald Duck, I wasn't a fan of Donald Duck. I hated him. I really hate Donald Duck. Um, so you got Donald Duck on the, on the left hand side and then you got what looks like a vampire, a, a zombie type version on the right hand side. So again, yeah. it's what people want. Here's a question one for you. I'm, I'm with Aaron on this one. If you've got a picture you want to get rid of, just cover it with a monolith. one. <laughs> <laughs> Easy fix. One block done. Everybody's happy. Go home. Or you could do an Obelix with a, uh, with one that is that he's carrying from Asterix. Well, that'd be from June, actually. But anyway, let's move on, shall we? Um, now we get into some of the 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 scenes. So this is a mm -hmm. well, I, I don't think the facial structure looks right for either of those characters, but the rest of it's nice, and it's an alien one uh, or aliens uh, one. Another one is a Joker, a comic book version. It's actually quite nice. It's quite subtle as well um especially with the ha ha's at the back um people like to do sort of all sorts of designs around people and some of it looks terrible but that's very subtle and very simple now we got some terminator ones the one on the left is quite good um from the original terminator and the one on the right i think is the t2 version uh, but again different because the damaged one on the right looks quite good with the skin rips on top of the the, uh, the um, character, um, but he's also got the writing in the glasses on the one on the left. Another T Terminator one with the actual robot itself, and the fact that they they shine or they they show where the the light reflections would occur, and that's very cool. That's that's a good artist in themselves. Uh, just something fairly simple like a Harlequin um, from the animated series Batman. <coughs> Now you get some cute ones. So someone wanted a very cute little um, tattoo and they got a Chewy, Lego Chewy, <laughs> which I think is kind of cute. And then someone's got the actual action figure of Chewy from back in the day, which is not that bad. <laughs> Again, I think they're kind of cute. That'd be, the, uh, that'd be an Aaron one, that uh, Chewbacca, the one on the right-hand side with the action figure. <clears throat> yeah, probably. Uh, a very nice little, nice little cutesy Wonder Woman uh, and Beaker from the Muppets, which I think is done in, in more so watercolour than anything else. And it's they're both quite good. But again, different styles. And, and individually as artwork, these would be pieces that you could put up on your wall almost um, once you skin the person. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, so actually, it's funny you should mention that because Aaron mentioned way back up here in Japan, you can actually get, once you've passed away, uh, get your stuff put on display and preserved and all the rest of it. So uh, I did hear about that because Japanese tattoos tend to be very, very elaborate. So Yeah, yeah anyway. they are, and they don't use the traditional machines. Uh, they yeah. still use some of the um, old-fashioned version uh, or traditional yeah, ways on. of doing it. Um, very on. simple, boldly go um, with the uh, ship, uh, the Enterprises, uh, Voyagers, and your... I'm trying to think of what that one is, the small one. Um, but to have font on someone uh, is actually quite a, a challenging task. Um, sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong, and I'll show you some examples of it going very wrong very soon. Photorealism is where it looks like you've basically taken a photo of the object, person, um, flower, or whatever the case is. And these are some examples of photorealism. Uh, some very nice ones of the Ninja Turtles that look like they could have just literally been pulled off the screen. Uh, the one on the right with the jigsaw piece puzzle. There you go. You can take that piece and throw it away, dude, and, and you can mm. see what um, is underneath. And a little bit different. It's not pop cultural, but it's it's a machine with a 
and I've forgotten what the name of that the piece of material is. Um, Gardaban. Gardaban. Thank you, you very much. Um, but again, photorealism, it looks like someone's just basically taken a photo of something real. Um, I'll stop you there. I agree with you, Claire, when he couldn't work out what it was. I think it was the Defiant as well, that little starship that we yeah. saw. So, anyway. Possibly is. Yep. Um, uh, some more photorealisms, uh, the dock and the DeLorean, which look awesome, uh, and Harley um, from the film. You know, it almost looks like it's a still shot. Some Superman ones, Christopher Reeve in colour and in black and white, and the black and white one looks just stunning. It almost looks like a black and white or sepia type photo. Um, and I think the one on the left looks like it could be from Superman 3 because he's looking a little angry there. Um, here's one for you. Um, Aaron, I agree with you. Aaron, on this one, if you're going to put boldly go on your body somewhere, you've got to be careful about the way you stick it because it would be clearly misinterpreted. So, uh, yes, is, uh, yes, indeed. Yeah, ne next time we do this, we'll play Pick the Body Part because there's uh, some yes. real good out there. I've saved you all from seeing some of the rest of the person. So you can be very thankful <laughs> later on. Um, again, people have different things of what they love in terms of pop culture. And there's Alf on the left-hand side, our little lovable alien life form. And for those on the right-hand side, it's Star-Lord, man. It's, don't you know, <laughs> Star-Lord? <laughs> Which is very cool. It's a very complicated piece and it's still very cool. Now, now it gets a little bit more complicated in terms of photorealism. The new Spidey costume, which was a metallic sort of version, and Iron Man. Uh, now, the Iron Man one's a little flatter than it probably could be, um, but that's still the picture of Robert Downey in it still looks fairly impressive. More Ninja Turtles and Chewie. See, now, this is a Chewie tattoo I'd probably have if, if I'd ever had one because it looks nice. It just looks nice. i tell you what, that Chewie actually looks like a cross between Chewbacca and Lumpy, actually, from the holiday special. It has a very Lumpy-ish look to it. So there you go. Yeah. Well, maybe it's Lumpy growing up. Who knows? Yeah. Um, and again, the Spider-Man one from before and a Leonard Nimoy Spock, which just looks like a photo has been put on someone's body. You know, it just he's so... It's just brilliant. What can I say? Uh, some more ink from fans, a bit of watercolour Wolverine on the left-hand side. And then you start getting into the real weird ones where uh, Alf is in a Garfield costume. Uh, why? Because he likes cats, because they're the best kind of food, apparently. And Lucky was appropriately named, apparently. Um, some more symbols in watercolour and, and different versions, uh, mostly Marvel here. Still very nicely done. A lot of work put into these. Uh, the watercolour on the left is the Avengers logo with the Infinity Stones. And the one on the right is a definitive watercolour. And I think it looks good. The photo doesn't do it justice because um, it was the best version I could find. But it's certainly the comic book versions of the characters. And I love the way that the, they all sort of fade into each other. All right, stop there. So Greg has said, will there be an extended version of tonight's show based on our discussion last week? So, yeah, that's very, very good. So you'll have to decide which one you want to watch, the theatrical version or the extended 12-inch uh, 12-inch extended mix. More pictures than you could possibly shake a tattoo artist at. So there you go. Uh, another watercolour, um, Captain America, some logos down the middle, um, and a very mm -hmm. nice Spider-Man on the right. Now, I don't know... Um, I don't know. It looks like it's a it's a melty one again, uh, but it's sort of very cool. Some more creature from the Black Lagoon, a very photorealistic black and white um, on the left, and a bit more stylized. Uh, what would look like a sticker? You can almost sort of say it's a, a sticker sort of form on the right hand side. Some very simple ones uh, again. Um, Star Wars on the left. Uh, and a X-Wing and TIE Fighter on the right. Now, look, they're very simple forms, and for whatever reason, they're also very subtle. Um, the ones on the right, the X-Wing and TIE Fighter, that's probably a $50 job that Stacey was referring to earlier, so there yeah. you go. They're probably just a beginner sort of tattoo for the younger generation. Um, I know some, some of the guys I train with, they're all young and they've got sleeves and all that sort of stuff, um, but they're probably just starter ones. 
it, it sort of reminds me of those original um, computer games from the uh, the late 70s where it had that sort of imagery on it. Yep. Uh, what was it? 8-point dot... dot um, 8-bit, yeah. 8-bit yeah. dot, yeah, 8-bit uh, images. Uh, the one on the left is down the back of a, of a calf. Uh, that's the Enterprise with a line. Um, and the one on the right is a lot of Star Wars vehicles, X-Wing, Millennium Falcon, and um, Slave One. Now, American traditional style tattoos, these are very bold with only a few colors in them. Um, usually they're a knife and a rose or an eagle, like I mentioned before. However, these are some patterns of American uh, traditional in terms of superheroes. So there's the one on the right with uh, uh, just the, the cowl of Batman and the last laugh from the comic book. And the one on the left is a few more images, um, which these were not on somebody. So I think they're, they're looking at being used as uh, images on someone. But again, it's a different style. Um, and I think the proper version of uh, tr American traditional actually looks better than, than these ones. Uh, a couple of that came through. An alien uh, killed with kindness in his little tuxedo. Uh, very cute. And on the right-hand side, a rocket ship and some science. So that really is sci-fi there. Black and white. Well, it's a very simple term. It's black and white. Well, actually, it's black and gray, essentially. So it's, it's tonals of black down to uh, not using white, but the, the skin tone of the body. Uh, Leonardo on the left is a Ninja Turtle. Very, very detailed and very, very nice. Uh, and then the Predator on the right is even more detailed. Uh, and it's actually quite impressive on the detail, which I think is on a calf by the looks of it. So yeah, when you're looking at someone who's got you know about that much, you know about eight to ten inches of room, the artwork is fairly impressive. The Bane, oh, that's just—it looks like someone has, has photoshopped that. It doesn't even look like it's been done with ink. It's just absolutely brilliant and stunning in, it, in itself. Uh, and the right-hand side, the Batman, that's just a, a comic book version, um, mm. a Jim Lee version of Batman. Some more black and grey, uh, black and white, but with a, just a touch of colour. And you can do this with Ninja Turtles, essentially, because the fact that uh, you couldn't tell them apart originally, apart from their weapons, now they, they got their masks done in different colours. Um, but again, two different styles of Leonardo. The one on the left is very detailed and very sort of actiony, and the one on the right is all right is all right cross stitch now this is a new one that's sort of come into the into the industry in a short period of time um and it is essentially what it is cross stitch now the difference between this cross stitch and what you actually cross stitch is the artist uh if you have a look at the right hand side the artist actually does two x's uh sorry does two lines and makes an x in each one and they've got to do it straight and they've got to do it in pattern and i tell you what I don't envy the person doing that because if you get one wrong, that's it. You sort of, you, you kind of, you can't unstitch it. So yeah, no one, picking, no one pick it. No, I'm picker in the world will unpick that. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Now these have also come up, and I hadn't seen these before. I started doing the research. They're patchwork ones, and <clears> they look like someone's sewn a patch and put it on the skin. You know, and some of these are awesome. That I don't know if you have a look at the at the high amount of detail in them uh if you look above the child there there's a little curl which makes it look like you've you've got an, a thread that's coming out and there's a few of those around this picture but again very detailed and a lot of line work and line work as an artist is it'll make or break the tattoo the line work needs to be brilliant or it just doesn't look right uh a mickey mouse and a betty boot both done as, as patchwork both interesting Mario and Belle, and Belle's a very cutie Belle because she's got a little beast sort of toy there. When I, when I saw this one, what did I do? do, 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 do. Uh, Goofy and Donald Duck. Why, why is Donald Duck always angry? That's my question. Um, yeah, he's got an attitude problem. Yeah. <clears throat> it really does. But the patchworks in these just look brilliant. You know, if you didn't have those, those little bits hanging off it, you you wouldn't even know it was a, a patch uh the pink power ranger and a darth vader one and the darth vader vader one has got flowers down the bottom and the the lettering is actually done quite well too again lettering is very hard to do um some people struggle with it 
and some people just nail it. Jurassic Park looks like the patch from the film. Uh, and then you've got a, a little chunky stormtrooper on the on the right with the patch of the logo in patch form. <laughs> I wonder if you ever get an injury, if you could just put one of those on and just make it look like it's been patched up. <laughs> uh, a couple of celebrities. We know some celebrities have got some. Um, I, don't, I could not get a better picture of the small tattoo that he has, but Robbie Downey Jr. and some of the other Avengers do have this logo, and it's an Avengers logo. Um, and they all got that done very small and very subtly, uh, I think, after Civil War or, or about that era. So Ian McCallan, he also has the Lord of the Rings font on him, and I think a few others do too. I can't remember who they do. do. Uh, Robbie, who we mentioned before, who has the Spider-Man on his wrist, he also has um, Lord of the Rings font on his arm as well. Now a bit of ack ack action for you guys. You know, these are the first one is a full um, round piece, and the second one is just a very nicely done poster-looking sort of one. You know, it just looks like you've you stuck a poster on someone's leg. Uh, a bit of Thundercats for those Thundercats fans out there. A very nice single piece of lino on on the left hand side and on the right hand side, the full crew of all of them, and I can't tell you who they all are because I only know lino. <laughs> I wasn't a Thunder Thundercats fan. And then they get some a little weird. Know the some ner some of the nerds out there will know the answer to that question. Daniel will. Daniel will correct me soon enough. He's a big Thundercats fan. Um, the Han Solo one on the left. You just got to ask why. You know, mm -hmm. you had this opportunity, and the only thing I can think of is the space scene and the Falcon may be a cover up for what was inked and didn't look good before they coloured it. Either um, that, yeah. either that, or the artist couldn't said, "I can't draw faces, but I can put a ship on top of a face." And the, and the owner said, "Yep, that'll do fine." <laughs> <laughs> Very strange. And on the right hand side, Darth Kitty Cat. So, you know, because why not? Uh, some more Ninja Turtles. You go from comic book cartoon form, which almost looks like a sticker, uh, to a few more uh, different versions of uh, photorealism. Some Wolverine, color Wolverine on the left hand side from the comic book form, and a very nice black and black and gray on the right hand side. Now you can see there's a bit of the shine coming up on that uh, black and gray. That's because it's just been finished. And what they do is they they finish it off with a bit of um, uh, I'm not sure what the liquid is. Someone else can tell me what that is, um, and that'll just sort of soothe the skin and helps it sort of settle down. Then they wrap it and you rub that stuff on your for a week on after or whatever the, whatever you need to do with them. Uh, logos again, so your Transformers Autobots logo on the left and a very stylized Superman uh, Man of Steel logo on the right. It's a bit of watercolor. It almost looks like someone's built some paint down and then just chucked the, the logo on top sort of thing. Thanks, Ange. <laughs> yeah, good on you. It's like, I hope you didn't Google that, Ange. If you Googled that, you're a cheater. You should know this stuff off the top of your head, even though MPS didn't so big. <laughs> now, stickers. I mentioned this a second ago. Stickers are what almost looks like you got a sticker and stuck it on someone. And the Donatello one on the left is just brilliant. You know, it just looks like someone's got a sticker, printed it, stuck it on your body. It almost looks like one of those those ones you used to get as kids, you know, the, the temporary tattoos you used to get from footy cards and all that sort of stuff. It almost looks like one of those. And the one on the right, I think, is the Moon um, logo from MTV. Uh, I think, is it the Moon Man? Or something very similar to that. It's got a very sort of trippy 70s, 60s sort of effect with the multiple versions of it down there as it follows on. Again, some more stickers. These are Nemo, and we found him. He's right there. Uh, mm. And a couple of the other characters from the film. But again, it just looks like, looks like it could be a decal that you just put on your bathroom wall. Now, this one on the left, the Enterprise breaking out, is just fantastic. It's got so many different elements to it that it's just, it's a brilliant piece. Uh, it's a rib piece, and rib pieces hurt because it's, the ribs are very close to the skin, so you actually can hit the ribs. And you watch a lot of people in pain when they get rib pieces done. 
that's not the only body parts that it hurts, but it's one of the more sensitive ones. But still, the piece is just absolutely brilliant. That's the sort of thing you'd want as a poster on the wall. Uh, and the one on the right is a watercolour uh, TARDIS and um, Gallifreyan um, language. Gallifreyan, what's the word Symbol. I'm looking for? Symbol. 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 Thank you. Say, thank you. Uh, now, these ones are a little bit different because they don't have outlines in black. So if you have a look at the one on the left, the TARDIS, and all the, the cogs and, and that, there is no black outline on the TARDIS. So that means that they've gone straight into the colour, and while the rest is black now on the right-hand side, the Dalek and the TARDIS are both done as just blue for some reason. I don't know why you did the Dalek as blue, but the TARDIS looks all right. Um, but again, there's no black outline. So imagine you have a colouring book, and you, you paint in all the... Um, the, the pictures in there, but you've got lines to follow. This is not like that at all. This is, you've got lines in blue or whatever color that you want, essentially. Now, the piece on the left is a very complicated piece, and I mm. think it's actually part of the opening sequence of, well, I don't know what series of yeah. it, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's one it of them, one of the more recent years. Was it Matt Smith? Um, I'm, th I'm thinking that, uh, it, might have been a bit later. Might have been um, uh, the next guy. Clear one there. Yeah. Um, and on. then on the right hand side, a very nice watercolor. I assume that's it. So there you go. Okay. Uh, a very nice watercolor on the right hand side, where again, very little, if no black at all, is used in it. And the colors just almost look like a, a 60s sort of neon painting. Now, here are some weird ones. The one on the on the left is actually a girl with her arm like that. And there's a camera there on her arm. Mm, 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 mm. I don't know. I've seen some other strange ones. Uh, but the guy on the right, well, now he's a proper triclops because he can look front and back. And if you have a look at the one on the right, he's got eyes down the back of his neck as well. So, And mm -hmm. I bet you he's got another brown one further down, but that's not the story. This goes to show how, how how we're not nerdy enough for this show because yeah uh, uh, yes Aaron picked it out yes Peter Capaldi that's, so, uh, that's what I was trying to think of yeah good on you Jeffrey right. you let me down mate you're the you're the English Doctor Who dude you should know this stuff and you've yep, sacked <laughs> <laughs> so the the girl with the the camera you just got to ask why okay look there's people get it for different reasons but that's just a really weird one imagine, if she's sleeping on the bed imagine someone sort of walked in and she's got this on her face it's just as for the eyeball, well, that's just to freak out kids, I reckon, or people. It's to keep magpies away when you're riding a bike and they're going to chase you and hit you. <laughs> now we get to some of the fail. Now I regret nothing. I regret nothing. Now, this is where your tattoo artist needs to understand mm. spell check. So there are no regrets here, okay? And I'm surprised Ad, Ads isn't here because he would love this one. No regrets. Now... This guy, there are three oh. memes of this one that I've found, and I've got to say, if you have a look at the image first, it's a, what looks like, I don't know, metallic-type spider from his nose across his face on both sides. Um, and if you read the meme, it's, I'm not sure how this man dies, but I'm putting my money on being beat to death with a shoe. Because <laughs> <laughs> seriously, that's a WTF if I've ever seen one. Yeah. Uh, the other meme for this, have you ever... Ever had a tattoo regret? I think this guy does. Um, uh, another uh, spelling error. Mara, about the chick with the camera on, I think. Is she banned? So she has to cut her own arm off whenever she walks into yeah. a, 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 somewhere insecure. So there you go. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Um, and the third one for this is Spider Man, you're doing it wrong. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I still think you'd be beaten to death with a shoe. Uh, speaking of Spider Man, this just. When people get them on their face, it's a little extreme for me. Um, but the fact that this picture is terrible, I think, says it all. Now, this also means that it might be done by a friend, someone who thinks that they can tattoo, and after probably several alcoholic beverages, um, thinks that this is like should be held in the Guggenheim Museum, but then in the morning sees that it should not be brought out of a four-year-old's kinder um, bag. Uh, a very weird looking sort of Willy Wonka on the left hand side. 
And for those who are a little bit different and a little bit special, perhaps, who grow hair in weird spots, um, you can always have a <laughs> troll doll. <laughs> Now, if you love The Lion King and you're a four-year-old and you can draw it, that's great. But if you love The Lion King and you're a grown man and you can't draw it, don't suggest someone to draw it on you. Because <laughs> that's just... <laughs> it's wrong on so many different levels. Now, to say this guy's got crabs is probably an understatement. <laughs> I don't know what this is. Or, or, or better still, where it's come from. But... You'd want to say, hey, buddy, look behind you. And every time you turn around, <laughs> the comedy of errors. Somehow or other, I don't think a Darth Vader helmet is going to cover that up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that's called wearing your T-shirt forever in a day. Um, on the left-hand side, having it on the palm of your hand is actually, they wear off very quickly from that position. Um, and slap, um, yeah. Uh, on the right-hand side, that was how I drew Batman when I was about four. So um, that's sad. Claire suggested it's a Doctor Who monster that could do with the thing on his back. So <laughs> oh, that one. Okay, look, it might be. No, no, I don't, I don't think, think it is. No, I still don't think it looks right. Yeah. Unless he's turned around and said to the to the kids, "All right, we'll get the, the outline, and you can just paint it however you want." Yeah, pretty much. Um, now this is a brilliant picture. But it failed in the show Ink Master. Uh, this person took liberty and actually got the photo wrong. Now, dude, you're a Batman fan. What's wrong with uh, Two Face right there? Uh, it ran the wrong way. The face is wrong. The back to front. Yep, the scarred face is always the left hand side of the character. And what they did is they had a day where they were to do villains, all the DC villains. So there was Catwoman and. Two Face and a few others, and they brought in a special guest judge who was a DC comic book guy, and he bagged this one. Like the fact that you got it wrong and you didn't ask, you didn't check, and all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, so that's a fail. It actually looks like they got the suit right because he's got the orange suit on the right hand side, but uh, yeah, the face is around the wrong way. Um, yeah. Apparently, it's called a macra. So there you go. So the dude got a big right. ass macra bug on his back. So uh, there you go. How about that, eh? All right. See, I'm not that big a Doctor Who fan. I, I missed that one. Um, Even Jeffrey didn't get it. At yeah, this no, point. no, that's a real macro terror for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, the one on the left, I sort of had to cover some of the imagery, which somehow didn't work. Oh, I know what I did wrong. Uh, that's a very bad joker. Let's just say that. Uh, and Spider-Man, I don't know. Maybe the kid drew it and someone decided they wanted that on, the, um, on them. Now, on the right-hand side is the full picture of a Marvel sleeve. And then they did, you know, Wolverine and, and Hulk. And then they did Ant-Man, but in ant size. So, <laughs> so, the fact that they had to explain that it's Ant-Man and put an arrow there, and the arrow is bigger than the actual character, uh, i got to say that's a bit of a fail. Um, that's a very sad-looking oh. joker. <laughs> You yeah, just that, requires want to be... Darth, that requires a Darth Vader helmet, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing is, you can see from the corner that the guy looks pretty hairy, so what you'd want is you'd really hope that that overgrows quite thick that you can't see underneath it, and that might be a solution to that issue. Um, for us Batman fans, there's the tramp stamp on the right, which is... <laughs> I don't know why. So if I was ever to get one of a bat symbol, it would have been like Bon Jovi on, on the arm, and that would have been it. Now... We all love our costumes, but the guy on the right went one step further and, and got a utility belt put on his waist. Um, I, I don't have many words for that, really. Dude, do you have anything on that one? Well, the one on the, the, one on the left, I totally agree, is pretty povo, but the one on the right actually does look all right. So, uh, yeah, they've done oh, I'm not there. disagreeing that the one on the right isn't right, but I think that's a guy's back. Oh, okay. And, you know, it's not really, um, yeah. Um, yeah. Now, hang on. Now, here we go. We've got a new new, new viewer in the thing. Which of you guys have pop culture tattoos? I'm going to take it out there and say none of us do. Is that right? I know no. Jeff wrote. No, we're all shaking heads no. over here. None of us have them. No. Only you, Luke. Well, not yeah. only you, but you're one of them, Luke. So, um, yes. Yeah. We are tattoo, tattoo virgins and like we've got nothing. Yeah. We're clean skins. So, there you go. Um, so, that'd be a good trivia question, actually. Yeah. Which one of us three has a tattoo? The answer is none of us. So, there you go. 
Who's thought about it, though? That's another question. Um, no? Okay. Only, only no. me then. Uh, I it was rhetorical. I think that was a real a question. Little, a little bit. But a little bit. Got All right. There. Yeah. Uh, some more of the ink fails. Um, Wolverine on Horses? the. Horses? Oh, jeez, comp that. <laughs> Uh, I can I can beat you on that one, Claire, and and we know yeah. why. Um, Move on. Anyway, uh, Wolverine on the on the left, and a very I don't know Wolverine on the right, um, and I can't think of that blue dude's name either. So it's supposed to be yeah. uh, Loki or something like that. No, I he's uh, it's the Nightcrawler guy, the guy. Oh, who yeah. oh yeah, Nightcrawler. Yeah. yeah. See, I know my stuff. You guys are useless. Yeah. <laughs> One for Hankin. If he ever wants Michael Jackson done, I wouldn't go to this guy. Um, <laughs> and for those who want an Enterprise that's a little bit wonky, that looks like Hang it on. may. Have... It just looks a bit wrong. Forever with us, touch so many. You can interpret that yeah. in a few different ways, couldn't you? Exactly. So, uh, yeah, not good. Exactly. Uh, and on the left, on the right hand side, a very wonky looking Enterprise. Um, I don't know why you would call it a bad one. Just, just, and the symbol's wrong. It doesn't quite, it's not right. And for all those who thought um, 7 of 9 was really hot, this might change your mind. So if you look like this, I don't think this show would have been as popular. I can't believe the guy put Shut Up Wesley on the tattoo. I mean, of all the tattoos to get a card, why would you get that? That makes that's uh, uh, A lot yeah. of these, I think, uh, it's a good idea at the time. This will be funny. Hang on, I haven't thought about the fact that it's, the repercussion goes for, for my entire lifetime. Um, Vader with a with a Winnie the Pooh? I don't know. Just, just make of that of what you will. Well, uh, maybe Pooh's the dark side. Oh, uh, is he? Maybe that Winnie gets him out of the shit, you know, Winnie the Pooh. Anyway, move on. Yeah. Uh, a T-1000 in a very badly designed version, and it looks like someone started doing a, a Predator version of Arnie but never, but never came back. Um, <laughs> I just think it's that was it. Now, another Batman one, and this this has so many different elements to it, like bad um, uh, lettering and no stencil. And I don't know if you guys can see this, but it looks like it's raised slightly where it's all done. That's because they've damaged the skin and it's going to scar. So, yeah. Uh, a couple of nice ones. We've gone out of the, the the fails and gone back into the nice bit of Marshmallow Man action there. A full scene on the left and just the Marshmallow Man himself on the right. Uh, a bit of Tinkerbell, two different colours on the same person. So a bit of blue and purple on one. And uh, I don't know why you would do that, but, you know, someone loves Tinkerbell. And if the Borg ever came here 300 years earlier, it would have been Abraham Lincoln... Uh, I don't even know what his designation would be. One of Borg, perhaps. Um, one of Abe. <laughs> Abe of one Borg. of Abe. Yeah. Uh, some Astro Boy. Very nice little cartoony version of Astro Boy on the left. And I really like this 3D version of Astro Boy on the right with the blue and the red. And I haven't got any 3D glasses to see if it actually sort of matches up, but I bet you it does. Here we go. Lincoln of Borg. He's yeah, okay. like missed the L, but that's okay. We got it. So well done. Yeah. Um, and some very nice font that's written and is spelt correctly. Uh, a couple of I solemnly swear I'm up to no goods. Um, in some nice watercolor background and diff different font. Uh, now, if you are a Star Trek fan, this is serious. They've written every every um, version at whatever point this was. Uh, um, you know, 1701A, D, E. So, yeah. But the font is actually quite straight and quite nice. So, there you go. That's that's one for someone in the trivia contest that goes, oh, what was the third Enterprise? You'd be like, hang on a second. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing up my sleeve. Oh, but on this hand, a story. You know what the worst part is? When they release a new Star Trek and release a new Enterprise with an extra new number, they're going to go after the tattoo part. They're going to find a way to stick on the next one. <laughs> it's yeah. actually whatever. And if, and if they they go back and do a series in between the series, then they've got to find room between them to, yeah. to fix that. Uh, a nice Astro Boy. There's an image of that where it's half the robotic and half the actual Astro Boy himself on the left, and a new bit of um, cartoony Trek on the right. 
these ones are kind of cool. Superman all the way up from the fist down. Uh, so it looks like you've got Superman or Superman's using your hand. Now, the first time I saw one of these was the Bruce Lee one, and I thought it was very clever. <laughs> That's good. Um, Bruce Lee's hand there, and then they did the same with Popeye. And as we mentioned Popeye before, he's got a tattoo with a guy with a tattoo. So that's kind of kind of cool. Uh, two things. Uh, Aaron, I like this one from Aaron. If you got, it was in the Kelvin timeline with your Enterprises, what happens then? You're a bit up the, up the crap. Uh, and, Luke, we may actually uh, bring that up at the end uh, once we finish the presentation and ask what, what, the, between the three of us what we would consider. So we might uh, save that for the end. Yep. Uh, then there's a Hulk at the top, which I think is very kind of cool because it looks like it could be changing from Bruce to, to the Hulk. Uh, and then I can't think of that character's name. Um, Mega Man. Mega Man. Okay, there you go. And again, very cool sort of image. Uh, so he, and I thought this was very cute. Yeah, all right. Thanks, Ange. I thought this was very cute. I don't know why you would tattoo it on the bottom of your foot, but uh, for those Toy Story fans, um, providing this guy's name is Andy, that actually works. If it's not, then that's very weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and a couple more Doctor Who references now. Lines are very important, and straight lines are hard to do. Circles are even harder. Uh, so if you can find someone who can do circles, the top one with the blue and the white circles is actually really, really nice imagery. And the bottom one is just the Gallifreyan uh, by itself down the bottom. And as they say on the, show, on the show, machines down, no more ink. Is that it, is it? That's it. We're done. Da, 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 da. Nicely done. So big, as always, a round of applause for MPS. I know we had 10 million pictures to go through and uh, probably saw the most greatest and worst of tattoo images you could possibly imagine. So... How was the experience of that doing that in Pierce? That was actually not as hard as the food one we did uh, a few weeks ago. And the reason was the research was easy. It's just trying to pick the right images. And when you Google any of these, there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands, but trying to pick the right ones for it. It wasn't that hard. It was just uh, for those who are counting, there was 127 slides. The food one I did was 105 slides. Uh, no, I'm not doing any more than that because it's it's just getting out of control. Uh, concise and to the point. The food one was also a lot more research to try and find images. This was just Google and they just throw themselves at you. Very good. All right, so we'll go back to Luke's question here. If we were to get one, what would you get? Uh, I'll start with you two. You could you work out which order you want to go in. I'll, I'll basically say for a microsecond, I had a thought about getting a Space 1999 Eagle. Okay. Uh, the Hulk, the Hulk, and the um, the Bruce Lee one. I'd get a Batman one done, and a Catwoman on the other side. Cool, but I would uh, have to do that Lee. with one artist, and he's in New York. Hang on, sorry, I cut you off. What'd you say? Sorry, I said I was. If I was to ever do it, it would be only the one artist, and he's based in New York. So, okay. All right, uh, and for me, zero, none at all. So uh, there you go. That's nice and easy, isn't it? Eh? They don't interest me in the slightest. So there you go. If I like really good artwork, I'll wear it as a T-shirt or pin it up on a wall or something. So uh, there you go. Very good. Nicely done. Uh, yes, that's pretty obvious. Uh, yes, you would get Batman. That's this. Yeah, some of them are a bit no-brainers. Just like Jeffro Space 1999 one, that doesn't uh, surprise me in the slightest either. So uh, very good stuff. So there you go. Here we go. And just go for the the strobe lighter, especially considering making a sequel to the movie, apparently, which is uh, you do wonder what the deal is with that. But um, very good stuff. Uh, interesting topic. Yeah, it is these days, Aaron. I mean, everybody, every man, these dogs into this sort of stuff. Now, if we were to try to do this topic 20 years ago, we'd probably have like only three pictures and that'd be it. But now they're all out and about and it's become a bit of a social socially accepted to have this stuff everywhere and uh there you go and uh yes william you aim to misbehave well that's uh, what you do in the privacy of your own bedroom is entirely up to you so there you go um oh hang on hang on hang on clearly someone is trying to get to a christmas card list i am already a work of art how good is that yeah that imagine someone getting my head stuck on their arm or their leg or whatever yeah that's when they don't need a darth vader helmet over the top of it that's for sure <laughs> no time at all absolutely fantastic so there you go uh mps any final words from you uh no i think we'll just be nerdy for the next week so that's it just be nerdy 
Very good. And I like this one from Aaron. Uh, we should all get tattoos for next week and we'll judge them in the next show. Uh, let me think about that for a second, Aaron. Uh, no. <laughs> there you go. Very good. All right, we're going to buzz off. We'll leave you to it. We'll see you next week. Okay, as I said, there's only four shows left for the year, so uh, make sure you join us. Uh, enjoy the rest of the presidential election. It's all very exciting stuff. And uh, in the interim, make sure you, of course, <gasps> stay nerdy. Okay. Nerdy. Right. See you. Bye. See you.